Some dragons breathe fire and fly and rescue princesses, and some of them don't. But what are the top five mythical reptiles that actually have a close substitute that real life you can own? Today, let's go over it. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. When I was a little kid, Barney the big purple dinosaur was my favorite reptile that I couldn't actually own and he's not gonna make the list, but I think that all of us have our imagination captured by things like the Loch Ness Monster and dragons. But what if there were close substitutes you could actually own? Well, there are. So let's just start off with number five, Kaw from the Jungle Book. Now, Ka from the Jungle Book is maybe one of, probably my favorite on the list. I grew up on the Jungle Book. It was released a few years after I was born. The live action was really cool. And in actuality, because we know that the Jungle Book is set in India, and we know that three of the largest python species in the world are in India, you can kind of narrow it down, which was which is which. Or you can look on Wikipedia and it'll just tell you that it's an Indian python. But I'm not gonna suggest an Indian python because you probably can't find them, they're endangered in their native habitat, so it's maybe irresponsible to even promote them. But if I didn't know it was an Indian python, I would think it would be a reticulated python. Because it's a big giant snake, it's gonna be about 30 feet or something like that in the movie. Obviously there's no snakes like that in real life, but reticulated pythons can get over 20 feet quite regularly. And if you want something that is like Kaw, but in a smaller package, well, you have Super Dwarf Retex for that. Guys like Garrett at Reach Out Reptiles specialize in these type of animals that are gonna get to the size of, say, like a boa constrictor, much more manageable. And there are boreal, or semi-arboreal at least, kind of like an Indian python would be. And in the movie, you're gonna see Koss slithering around in the trees. That's where he meets Mowgli in the first place, if I remember right. So I think that's the important aspect. Now, if you want the patterning of an Indian python, and you don't care about the arborealness as much, and you want something in a smaller size, then I would say a Burmese python. So in this instance, Ka, I think if you wanted something that was like this animal in the movie, this being in the movie, and we'll get to more mythical creatures after this, then I would suggest probably a Burmese python or a reticulated python. They are sizable, like you'd see in the movie. They're not gonna be able to coil you up 35 times, and even if they did, well, that'd be the last time you got hugged by a snake, so don't do that. No matter how you look at it, if you want a retic or a berm and you really want something that is a ka, my first snake ever was named ka, by the way. It was a hognose snake. That doesn't really work. It works because the geography is correct. India, you can find, in parts of India, you can find both of these species. And if you live in a place, I know someone in the UK where you can find Indian pythons a little bit easier, that he has an Indian python. It wasn't even that expensive. And they can actually be really great pets. All of the three can be really great pets. If you want something that's the most docile, get yourself a berm. Most people will say that, right? This is always debated and there's no like true clear cut. If you want something that's a little bit uh, faster and moves a little bit more, then you'd get something like a articulated python, and if for whatever reason you can find an Indian python and you wanna be true to form, get an Indian python. Geography is right, the size is pretty darn close, all of them can exhibit some arboreal behavior, and if you stare into their eyes, all of them will hypnotize you. Okay, that one's not true. Number four, another movie animal, yellow spotted lizards from the movie Holes from 2003. This is an old but gold movie. This is actually Shia LaBeouf's first movie that he ever directed. This is not a film channel, this is a reptile channel. You don't want to get bit by a yellow spotted lizard. These uh, in the movie don't actually have anything that closely resemble them or exist. There are some yellow spotted lizards that, like a monitor species that do live, kind of sort of in that area of the world, but that obviously is not what they're trying to recreate. It's a totally fictional animal that looks like a bearded dragon, and also it has spots on it and is also highly venomous. Now if they're in the part of the world where I imagine they would be. If I watched the movie, maybe they actually say, but if they're from the Midwest, then you'd find beaded lizards there. And if you go further south, you find Gila monsters, which are venomous lizards. But if you want something that's more reasonable to keep as a pet and something that looks more like these animals, I would say probably bearded dragons because that's what they used in the movie. Now, a lot of it was CGI when like the frill goes up and it looks like a frill dragon and a bearded dragon had a baby and it produced a Gila monster, I don't know, a Gila monster. But anyway, they used actual 
bearded dragons and just painted yellow spots on them. And to be fair, bearded dragons kind of look mythical in the first place. If you were say from England, right? Or you're from the UK and you grew up there and then all of a sudden now you immigrated to Australia. Anyone who knows the story of how people got to Australia, this is funny. But anyway, if you went to Australia for the first time from the UK back in the 1800s, well then you saw one of these things, you would think it was a dragon. You would think it was gonna sprout wings and breathe fire at you because they look so darn weird. But because we, you know, live in a time where we have the internet and everyone knows what a bearded dragon is because they are such amazing pets, well, you know what it is. But imagine you didn't. Imagine you were from a foreign land two, three hundred years ago. It would look like a dragon. Okay, it's time for some more wild, crazy ones. Number three, you knew it was gonna be on the list, Basilisk. I hope I'm saying that right. I've never... No, I watched one Harry Potter movie. Seems like great movies. Actually, when I was doing the fan research, like for the fandom site, which I got all the information from, I kind of want to watch all the Harry Potter movies now. Anyway, this is a snake lizard hybrid thing from the movie Harry Potter. And the reason I say snake lizard hybrid thing, not knowing that because I've never watched the movie, I don't actually know besides what I read, is because it looks like a snake. It doesn't have limbs, but it has a jaw that is all one piece and it kind of chews rather than swallows things whole. And the teeth with the teeth structure in it, it has eyes that look more like lizard eyes. It has external ears. So it definitely looks like uh, kind of like a legless lizard, but I'm not gonna recommend a legless lizard. They're hard to find and I don't have any B-roll to show you and I can kind of do whatever I want because it's a mythical reptiles list. And it is hard to find something that is, you know, 50 feet long, has a keeled scale, venomous. If you stare at it, you die instantly. Uh, so the closest thing would be like a hognose snake, right? Western hognose, that makes sense? Because they're two or three feet long and they do have a keeled scale. And then they're kind of venomous, sort of. And if you stare at them, you'll definitely die instantly or they'll bluff strike at you, which they think, maybe they'll die instantly. Actually, if you stare at them too hard, they'll pretend to die. So it, like that makes sense, right? That's a good substitution. Now I've talked about hognose snakes a million times. I try to like shoehorn them into every list I ever do. But what I thought was really cool when researching this video as someone who hasn't really watched very much of Harry Potter at all. I think I watched the first one when I was 10 when it came out and that was pretty much it. How do you get told so fast? I think that the story behind it is very interesting. It is born of a chicken egg that is underneath a toad. And like, I'm incubating some right now, if you, if you, but if you can't wait, then hognose snakes, I have some of those too. Now, if the size thing is important to you, then there are several types of hognose snakes. If you don't want a Western, which is, or a Plains, I guess they're called now, then you could always get like a Madagascar giant, but even then they're not gonna get, like nothing's gonna get to 50 feet, but if you wanted to shrink it down 10 times, then you're gonna get closer. I always recommend Westerns, they're easy to find, they're absolutely beautiful, they have that keeled scale, which is really cool. They do have a rear fang type of venom, so like they're not gonna kill you like uh, Basilisk would, but I just think that, I mean, like of all the things, I could have said an anaconda because it's the biggest, you know, snake, biggest bodied snake or a retic because it's the longest, but forget about the size, what about that keeled scale, the venom, and I can't, tell you to go get a bush viper, right? So I mean, uh, the most reasonable thing that is close to these guys, I think is a Western hognose snake. And you can get them in a bunch of morphs that look kind of close to what these guys look like. Plus, if you ask any hognose snake, they will tell you that if you look at them and they look at you, you will die instantly. Scary. Number two, Arbok, Pokemon number 24. Now, if you've been watching the channel, you knew I was gonna kinda somehow try to jam a Pokemon in here. Not my favorite, but I think it's very cool. Uh, Arbok was evolved from Ekans. This is an Ekans. This is my Hognose Snake named Ekans. But I can't do two entries as Hognose Snake. So what is kind of bigger that would evolve from a Hognose Snake in a mythical type of land that is actually still real though? False Water Cobras. False Water Cobras, in my opinion, I mean, obviously I could tell you to go get yourself a monocle cobra, which is kind of probably what this thing was based on, uh, but I don't think you should. I think that most people shouldn't keep monocle cobras in their basements, probably not a good idea. I think that better would be a false water cobra. They do get bigger than say an Ekans, which it evolved from, right? They don't get quite as big, because I think it's they're 11 feet in the Pokemon universe, they're 11 feet long, where false water cobras are gonna be like six, seven, eight, something like that. They do hood up, so they're not a true cobra, but it is a form of mimicry right just to look bigger not to look like a cobra but to look bigger and ward off predators and things like that and unlike a true cobra which is what Arbok is based on they're not truly venomous but they are again rear fang venomous so I think this one I got pretty close where all the other ones like were kind of silly maybe this is probably the closest one and by the way I put in like 
way too much freaking thought into this video. So let me know in the comment section below. Hit a like if you want to follow up, if you want to do like Greek mythology or all Pokemon, just hit a like and let me know. We'll do another one or uh, we'll never do this ever again. That's fine too. Now I love Pokemon. I'm a giant Pokemon nerd still to this day. I played Pokemon Go in my mid twenties when it came out. I collected the cards. I still have the cards. I refuse to sell them because I don't know, for the same reason my dad refuses to sell Beanie Babies that he's had stored in a closet for 20 years because someday they'll be good enough to send you to college even though your kids are 30. I don't know. But either way, I love Pokemon. I absolutely love it. And I thought this was the coolest thing because when Ash Ketchum was 10 at the very beginning, I was almost 10 years old and I thought, well, maybe there's some universe out. There's not, by the way, spoiler alert, there's no Pokemon universe for real. But I think the closest thing you can do from collecting Pokemon is maybe collecting reptiles in a very responsible way. Don't overdo it, obviously. But... I think that it's kind of cool. I have like my own Pokemon collection, except for they're all living and breathing and take lots of money to feed and they don't love me. Pikachu. Except for Diamond, Diamond loves me. He likes eating my ears anyway. And False Water Cobras are freaking awesome. I think that these guys are definitely gonna rise in popularity. A larger colubrid snake that isn't crazy, can be handled, and has that cool factor of the rear fang venom that is cool for you, but also won't truly harm you. And quickly, before we get to number one, I wanna say a special thank you to Paint to Life, a subscriber of this channel, forever. Uh, a friend of mine who actually has his own channel basically does storytelling and painting of Dungeons and Dragons figures, including this one right here. And this is the reason I did this video. He said, hey, you should do this. I put up a poll to see if you guys wanted it. You guys wanted it. So I just wanted to give a special shout out because you inspired the video. Thank you very much, GMA Tank. And there's a video right here if you wanna go ahead and watch. And he did a little story about rainbow boas and how rainbow boas came to life. So, and it's actually like wildly accurate for someone who doesn't own snakes. Okay, let's get to it. Number one, Pickle Joe. What the heck is a Pickle Joe? I said earlier today when someone told me I should switch this out for number one. Well, Pickle Joe is a pickle with teeth. So Pickle Joe is me, basically. I eat so many pickles, I should be a pickle by now. If you've ever watched the live streams, they all start with, I literally eat a pickle at the beginning of every one. Pickles are my favorite food. Uh, people call me Pickle Wick. When I get fan mail, which you can send by the way, uh, and there's a link below for the PO box, it's addressed to Pickle Wick. Like 90% of the time it's addressed to Pickle Wick. So this had to be in, okay, what is this thing? It is a uh, character from the game Monster Hunter, which, Seems like a cool game. I think it's from like the 80s or 90s. I think I should have done more research on number one before I actually did this. I just got really excited that there was a pickle monster. So you can't obviously, I can't just like switch. You can't go buy me at a store and you wouldn't want to anyway. My head would blind you whenever you took me into the sun. So instead of uh, a me, of this pickle monster, you can get a caiman lizard instead. Because the pickle monster, Pickle Joe, he's kind of like semi-aquatic and he has like, he's like green and caiman lizards are semi-aquatic and they're green. They don't smell like vinegar, and they don't taste that good, probably. Don't know, never tried one. I don't recommend it either, but I just figured like I had to include this guy. Seems like uh, very fitting. And caiman lizards, by the way, are some of the coolest. If you want something that is big, let's suppose that you like tegus, right? Like my, my man, Professor Herp here, who I'm wearing his merch today. If you want something that's a little bit more aquatic, something that like, adds a little bit more like arborealness, which is a word now. Then you want something like a caiman lizard because it's kind of like a water tegu, let's say. It has a very cool coloration, orange and green. Uh, it can be up in the trees, can be in the water as well. Not for the faint of heart, definitely probably an expert, intermediate to expert level reptile. Uh, but I think these guys are maybe the most interesting and underrated species, but it might not be a bad thing that it's underrated because we've seen lots of people who have tegus who can't handle them and there's a whole thing about a tagu ban. You can watch that video right here. I like, I really went off last week. Holy cow, soapbox time. But I think that caiman lizards just add a little bit something extra for someone who's serious about uh, this species. And they get between two and four feet. So not super huge, but I just had to like shoehorn the Pickle Joe guy in this list. So there you go, top five mythical fictional reptiles that you can't have in five close substitutes that you actually can. What do you think? Should I do a part two where it's all about mythical or fictional or movie characters? Let me know in the description below and hit the thumbs up button if we get over 2000 likes, I'll make a second one, let's suppose. And I wanna say a special thank you to Allie who sent me this. So I got a peel box below and uh, I don't know, it's like a very humbling thing when you get, like this is a joke that I said in a video 
months and months ago. So Ali, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I'm gonna uh, put that on my bulletin board. If you wanna draw something, draw a meme out with pencil crayons, which is the most amazing thing ever. I'll put it on a bulletin board. I'm making a new background for the shoot and that will be in the background there. So I wanna say thank you very much to the Patreon supporters who got to see this video early. If you wanna see videos early, get discounts on the merch, know about reptiles in my collection that I still haven't talked about, know the progress on the brand new reptile room, yes new reptile room that I'm building for as little as $1 a month, Patreon. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See you guys on uh, what day? Hit subscribe. In some mythical land, I'll be smarter and be able to put full sentences together. See you on Thursday.